Welcome, let's begin to the new addition to your syllabus that's computerized testing. Very very integral part for your paper one and obviously since you are attempting your examinations through NTA and online module you automatically understand the importance of computerized testing and uh, we would be talking about the major intricacies in this topic. So let's move forward with this and all the material has been updated as per the recent syllabus so you can just check out the links below for updated material the postal course as well as the online classes would be in line with the new syllabus. So let's begin with the first understanding of the concept of what is the difference between a computer based test, a computer assisted test and a computer adaptive test. So let's first talk about computer assisted test. So everything that you were doing so far was a computer assisted test. That means you were writing, uh, you were solving the questions and filling up the OMR sheet. Those OMR sheets were evaluated through the computer based uh, computer and therefore the assistance of computer was required and this is what is a computer assisted test. Now this could be used to work around the entire coursework just for small assessments or assignments and could be used for e-learning, could be used as standardized test. A modification of this assisted learning or assisted computer assisted test is what is computer based test and further to a computer adaptive test. Under a computer based test what is there is the NTA examination that you have as of now. So you have the same paper rather than having it on the paper you have it on the computer. So all those who are appearing on the same day would have the same paper with the same questions probably if you are having the same set in the same sequence and that's what is a computer based test a simple replacement of a paper and pencil test to a computer system and that's what is a computer based test uh, NTA is a good example for that the next is computer adaptive test so might be 10 years down the lane from now we might move from a computer based test to a computer adaptive test a good example of computer adaptive test are GRE, GMAT, SAT, ACT so what happens in these tests is the computer through the mathematical modeling understands the learner's ability. Now let's say there are 10 people giving the exam. One is a weak student, one is a brilliant student. The computer knows by providing the first question whether the next question that I should provide should be of a difficult level or an easy level. Based on the response of the first question, the next question would come up. So for the first question, if uh, the answer is correct the next question would be difficult the next question would be further difficult if the responses are correct if the responses are incorrect the next question would be easy and further easy so based on the learner's ability you are trying to find out the best question for the learner so that's what is computer adaptive we'll go into the details of computer adaptive test as we proceed now why these computerized tests are important first of all these computerized tests are important as we said to assess the different abilities of the different candidates and also to help understand a easiest way forward for the grading and under this grading we have a value addition because uh, let's say the test is being divided into 10 categories so if the student is weak in two categories the student can work hard on those two categories and the remaining eight he can work on his own piece. So these computer assisted approach could be divided into five different categories. Let's talk about these very very interesting very very important so understand those very very carefully. The first is conventional testing. Conventional testing is what is your NTA exam a replacement of a paper and pencil test to a computer test same questions in same order just coming onto the computer screen one by one and that's what is a conventional test branch or response contingent test is something very very important to understand you have a question which can have four different responses now it's up to me what response or which direction i want to go let's say i choose a and my friend chooses c now all the question that I would have would be sub parts of this A. However, all the question that my friend has would be sub part of this C. So that's what is the branching or response contingency. Based on our responses, we have the next set of the question that is being assigned to us. So that's what is branched and uh, response contingency. The next is partially adaptive test. Now understand the difference between partially adaptive and fully adaptive. Partially adaptive what I do is I have a set of questions. I divide those questions into let's say three categories easy, medium and hard. The first set, uh, these three sets because each set would have few questions that are there are called as testlets. 
so a smaller test so first testlet is given if the person performs good the next testlet that would be given would be difficult than the prior one if not it would be easier than the prior one so what happens is you are not going one question by one question you are considering a group of questions as easy a group of questions as hard and moving with those groups however in a fully adaptive test you go question by question and that's the very basic difference between the two so you have one question if you attempt it correct the next difficult question if you attempt it correct the next difficult question if you attempt it incorrect easier question if you attempt it incorrect again a easier question so what happens is you have a fully adaptive test that is there with a variation in the question that is seen based on the response that is coming up and then you have sequential uh, testing which is focused only on classification decisions i should hire or i should not hire i should do or i should not do kind of that stuff so that's a classification decision that you are trying to work forward so five basic types of computer assisted approach and of which the computer adaptive is most important most scientific and that would be talking in detail so what's the benefit of all these computerized tests definitely you can have many administrations at a single go value addition as we said because you can identify your weak areas you can have a greater insight into your weaknesses and strength so a uh, good analytics could be provided for the instructor as well as the learner you can have open ended assignments that could be worked around a very important concept is feedback so with now technology you have voice feedback so after the test you can have voice feedback through kezena and that would guide you whether uh, which areas you are weak in how to work around those areas and a kind of uh, proper feedback as from the instructor could be given so that's through uh, the feedback tools that are there again you have learners with disability which can perform well with the help of computerized test because you can have the questions that could speak for the audio let's say for the blind and so on and so forth so that's one of the benefits now these fully adaptive tests that are there have certain important characteristics the first is all the psychometric test would have item response theory or itr as the basic criteria that means based on my response i would have the next question it has nothing to relate to the level of difficulty in the question so that's one criteria so let's say if we are working around swachh bharat abhiyan my first question is do you keep your house clean based on the response i would have a next question let's say do you keep your surroundings clean so that's within the response based on the response of the first question the second question comes up and the third question comes up so it's just based on the response nothing to do with the difficulty level so pre existing information of an examinee is again very very important to understand so based on that i know his learners ideas is i know his capacity capacity and based on that you can have the next question and you have one question at a time that comes up so this is a very very important approach that works around based on the level of difficulty you have a simplified a oh, uh, kind of uh, oh, optimization model that is being generated so personalization is important every individual is identified based on his strengths and weaknesses you would have the item difficulty and the questions that would be uh, selected so self adaptive model is there that's very very crucial to understand and it's very very reliable reliable to a level of multi part criteria that means each section that you are working on for each section the reliability is very very high so what we use basically as we said is a iterative algorithm let's say i have a pool of questions which have 10000 questions and to the examinee i have to produce only 100 questions so from that 10000 i pick up the first question based on the response if it's correct i pick up the next difficult question so to the, do that i again go to the pool of the 10000 questions from that i bring the next question that would be difficult than that so it requires a huge amount of mathematical modeling that is there and it's a constant process that goes on so we call it a kind of iterative algorithm that works as also we said item response theory is important besides that you have the sequential probability ratio test model that is there that means within uh, the Uh, you are what you are doing is you are reducing the time but within the reduced time you have to maintain the quality and the same number of questions that you are attempting similarly you have bayesian's network uh, model which works on understanding the dependence between the various variables so you try to do that now all the computer adaptive tests you have four important crucial criterias those are there what four important crucial criterias are there first is 
what is the ability of the learner based on that you would produce the question how would you produce the question so how do you select which question is most apt for which learner so that's again crucial then how do you understand when to end the test so ending the test becomes again very very important and how do you score because let's say a first a first person had a difficult question and further difficult questions the other person had a easy question and further easy questions so you have a percentile grading so based on that you score the two people who gave different uh, level of difficulty who faced different level of difficulty in the examination so scoring becomes important so what are the criteria we need to understand first is the items that come up based on the response you have the next item that's produced based on the difficulty based on the differentiation of the item the weightage of the item the frequency of the concept let's say there are 10 concepts in the paper that should be there so which concept should have how many questions so that's again important it should not be that all the uh, questions should be from the same concept so the frequency of each concept should be taken into account the time of exposure how much time you can devote to each question the type of the test item is to be selected all of those are very very important but the most crucial issue here is when do you end the test how do you find at this point we have judged the significant level of abilities of the learner and we need to end the test so that's very very crucial an important issue the, sometimes you have some of the items which you feel are not of the level or are beyond the level so you have to remove the certain items in certain items there are some inaccuracies so you have to fix those so revision of those items determining the pool size how many questions should be there in the question bank from which you are asking the questions that's again important what is the strategy to select the right question that's again important so those are some of the important issues that we address now algorithms have been very very important so they are basic set of rules to work around the problem that's there now under this we have one very important algorithm which is intelligent water drop algorithm which is also known as iwd this works on a combinatorial uh, optimization model and what we are trying to understand here if i put in very simple words is in a ideal situation if you have a water drop that falls what would happen it would go straight but in this condition uh, in reality it moves if it the twist and turns that means a person prefers to have a easier path as compared to a harder path so that's the basis of this algorithm so with this we understand the whole criteria of computerized test we will be covering many more new topics in the upcoming lectures so stay tuned for further updates have a wonderful day ahead